don't do that, don't do that, do that. We're not doing this. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, we don't have to. <laughs> Why are you doing it? Um, okay, so episode 29, question and answer, members only. Uh, here is a question from not a member. Um, we ripped this out of somewhere else. It just seemed like a good question. Um, and I haven't read it. So Austin said it's a good question. And he always does the, <laughs> if you don't want to do it, we don't have to. So that makes me question it. So I might read this out and be like, no, fuck, we're not doing this. Uh, Martin Andrews, can I get your opinion? So I started a, I started sewing about a year ago, mostly to make weld caps. Oh yeah, I meant to I meant to actually I wanted to do this, um, and I bought a cheap brother sewing machine. Well, I found out I really enjoy it, so I've outgrown that brother. So I want to upgrade. I'm stuck between getting a vintage Singer. Don't do that. I feel confident I can refurbish one. Don't do that. I can drop a bit more money and get some kind of walking foot industrial machine. Do that. Uh, I'm not making any money. Then you're fine. <laughs> Why are you doing it then? Uh, I'm not making any money doing this. So I don't know if that makes sense to straight, to straight go straight to a walking foot. Mostly uh, sewing tactical gear, by the way. Mostly sewing tactical gear, by the way. What option would you choose? <laughs> Are you telling me that you're mostly sewing tactical gear? People have asked us for welding caps, I don't know, dozens of times mm -hmm. over the last few years. And we looked at them, and I'm like, okay, I don't know how to do this. And if we did do it, where is the price? Like, I look at everything by dollars per minute, dollars per hour. And we can build what we build in an hour versus making a welding cap, which would probably take us an hour until we, you know, automated or got better at it. And you have a cap on that welding cap. I have $75 in my head. Now, when you look on Etsy, I think there's $25, $35, these hobbyists, right? It's because they're in their mom's basement. They're, they're soccer moms or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they don't need the money. They, they don't factor in the cost of business. They're definitely not paying themselves time. Um, I would get a walking foot. That's what all of ours are. The Conso 206s, um, the Juki. Um, I, I don't know what the model number's on them. We've got two or three model numbers in there, but like the, the 215 or something. Um, for the Conso, you can get a Conso. And typically now, if, if you look on Marketplace or Craigslist is just fucking dead. I feel like there's something else there that I'm not aware of. Uh, because Marketplace is even fucked up now too with so many ads and stuff. Um, but just put in an industrial sewing machine, put in commercial sewing machine. Um, but you're looking for a walking foot because it'll it'll walk over. Uh, instead of just the feed dogs on the bottom kind of mm -hmm. pulling the work through and that tension, being that presser foot being smooth and it just letting the work pull, the walking foot, both of them move. It moves it along. It, it pulls it equally um, so that it doesn't bind up. And, and what also happens there, when you're sewing thick stuff, on a, on a home machine, the needle just moves straight up and down, and the, the feed dogs pull it through. What happens is the feed dogs pull the work, and if the work is thick, you get needle deflection. So the needle hits the needle plate, and that's what breaks. That needle bends, the needle breaks, uh, it jams it up. And most of your home machines, I mean, there's some old uh, brothers, and my mom really liked white, white, the brand white commercial, uh, not commercial, but white sewing machines. Um, because they were metal parts. And nowadays, like we, we get brother embroidery machines. We're paying between $1,200 and $1,600 for them. They're non-serviceable. When one goes down, I've got two or three more sitting in boxes here. We literally take that thing and put it out in the dumpster. We used to shoot them like the guys would shoot them up, but it leaves trash ever, like the plastic. You might as well be shooting glass bottles. That was fun when you're a kid. When it was in your mom's backyard, it's not fun when it's in your backyard. But you have to <clears throat> clean it up. Yeah, because it's you're a bit, like you might want to be barefoot in your like you can't be barefoot anywhere here. Yeah. So I was going to add to this that the sewing machine that you are going to use to sew welding caps is not going to be the same sewing machine that you are going to use to sew tactical gear because. Welding caps are made out of cotton. Well, they're made out of quilting cotton, typically. There's going to be more in them, though, because it, it, it has to be something that the spark is not going to catch on fire. 
And I think there's something else in there also. I don't know. The one when, when Cody's friend was here, we were talking about welding caps. He took his off of his head and I looked at it. It is two layers of quilting cotton sewn together with a little detail stitch and some ties. That's Got all it. That That's it was. right. That is where the conversation. That's, and I'm like, what did you pay for this? He's like 35 bucks. I'm yeah. like, I can't even, I can't even walk down the stairs for $35. Yeah. So Are we talking about those like do rag things? Yes. Like surgeons. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And it, and it's basically just to keep the sparks out of their hair and to keep the sweat from rolling in their eyes is my understanding. You could do, you <clears throat> could. And, and I mean, if, if I was going to pursue that as a business, right. You need other things. I would I would have like I would look at doing some welding aprons, like some leather mm. aprons, tool aprons, craftsman aprons. There's some really good dudes on Instagram and I mean they're getting several hundred dollars for these things and you have to cut like it it's leather, it's heavy, but I mean they these are bad ass and they are putting these things together. They're just beautiful and I look at that and I go, "Shit, we could totally do that." The the you would have a template, you would cut your leather out by hand. But once you had a market for that, you would buy a clicker press and the press would, you'd have this cookie cutter basically, and it just comes over. You put your piece of leather in there um, and then you have two handles on top. You have two handles because one is the safety and one is the trigger because it will literally, if it, it will cut, cut off you. anything that gets cut, yeah. caught in there. Um, just, just thoughts. I mean, we're talking about a clicker press is 20,000 pounds maybe. I mean, it's, it's a fucking huge, it's very heavy. Um, there are whole crap there's desktop ones and other shit but i mean and you're also not sewing leather with the same machine that you're sewing cotton you're not you, just, um, and and, and on, a, on a lot of the leather aprons and stuff you don't even have to have sewing on a lot of them um you're going to use uh rivets and stuff to put the um attachments and things on there but back to the the conso 206 you can get a conso 206 sewing machine they used to be about a thousand bucks i was buying them 600 to 800 we bought i think i bought 12 of them, I think, and got them for a thousand a piece. And typically, uh, when you buy from an individual, you're getting the old table, which is fine, it's almost always fine. Um, and you're getting and they're actually the old tables are probably even better. Um, and you're getting a clutch motor, right? So, when you're learning to drive that five speed, um, there's, there's a lot of jerkiness to it when you're learning. Whereas a servo motor, which is what everything has now, it's just an electric motor, and you when you let off, it stops, it doesn't continue to move any. Um, we can start girls who don't know how to sew and have it turned way down and it just chugs, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You don't have to have any throttle control with the foot or drag with the hand up here. That's why all those uh, wheels where the bolt, the belt turns um, from the motor to the top of the shaft, um, the paint's worn off those because we hold those to create drag or to move the machine one, two stitches at a time by hand. Um, but with the servo motor, we can just take a girl when she's a little better and just turn her motor up a click each week, and she won't even know it's happened. Mm -hmm. um, but you're looking probably 1200 bucks right now. You could get one of those machines. There's a lot of places online that will just ship them to you. And you're a couple hundred bucks. They'll, they'll show up uh, flat-packed on a, on a UPS truck or, or even all the way together on a semi-truck. You're going to pay a few hundred bucks to get it shipped. Um, you could probably get one for a thousand, twelve hundred dollars. It's been completely refurbished, probably repainted, touched up, uh, and they'll typically come with a brand new servo motor and a brand new table. Um, now we have these other machines in here, which is what we're buying now. Anything we buy now are these these jukies. They're much bigger, um, but they're way more forgiving. Like if 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 you fuck something up, it doesn't knock that needle bar out of time and and do all that stuff. Um, now, keep in mind, the first sewing machine I had was a 130E Singer. The next one was a GM. Uh, the, the 130E had a better reverse, whereas I think the 130 GM might have not even had a reverse. And those were lightweight machines. And for the first five years, everything I built was on that lightweight machine um, because I was renting them. It was, it, was, it was $25 a month to rent the 130E. Um, and it was 50 a month to rent the Conso 206. So now I look at the Conso 206s and I'm like, man, those are kind of lightweight machines. They're, and it's not that they're lightweight. You can just take somebody who is not as good and the bigger machine will be more forgiving. Uh, and you're going to pay mm, 2500 bucks for that machine, right? But you've got a machine that will last you. You will never outgrow it. I have a lot of sewing machines in the building that are just pushed into corners 
I could sit on them, but I couldn't put half my employees on them because they'll fucking destroy them. They don't have enough finesse. Um, so, is renting still an option? I don't. Not here. It's not. Fuck no. Yeah. In, in, in a major, Diego, major, it yeah, in a major city, maybe. So, well, just for him because maybe he doesn't want to dive twenty five hundred dollars deep into it. At first. Yeah, you you gotta find it, and and everybody like I would tell you go to um, Michael's Hobby Lobby. Um, some of the others, some of the, some of those stores have, uh, sewing classes. Yes. And you can kind of learn some stuff, but most of the people in there, you gotta, you gotta find the person, the one person that's there on the night you happen to be there that knows something about industrial sewing machines, because it's, it's there. It's just finding those people. Um, and here you're not gonna, you're not gonna find, I mean, we have Carhartt here, and you'll have ladies that are like, "Yeah, I could sew." But if you brought a Carhartt lady in here and put her on, put her in my shop, and like, "Hey, build, She's build leave something." Before lunch. Yeah, she she doesn't know. They don't know how to. They're just button pushers. They don't. They do not. There and there is some skilled labor over there that's held over from years and years past. Uh, but everything now is it's just so different. Um, it very much is a dying skill. Trying to tear us down, tear us down, but me and my team, the